Hello and welcome to Frank's School. I think this is the 106th day of the six year first video. Not sure because my computer is updating and I wasn't able to look at the last one to just check, but I think that's right. But, uh, off, not often, but sometimes I get that wrong. And this is words, or formerly class vocabulary, uh, the sixth day, actually seven because I didn't start counting with the first, I think, but with no plus. I was not able to meet with the uh, women of the adult, uh, the adult women. I was not able to meet with them for reasons I'm just not sure of yet, and I may never know. I don't know. They, they, they were not, they didn't come, so I didn't have any. Uh, the men were, as usual, unbelievable. So anyway, uh, the, the day was uh, the 19th of December. And there were limited pens. We didn't have enough pens to go around, so we were sharing pens. I think we had three among eight of us or something, or seven of us or something like that. So it was a little different, but it doesn't have to matter. It reminds me that, that you know, reading, reading and writing are different from words. Words are more basic than that. Anyway, here's the words we got. Uh, uh, quintessence. Uh, uh, she, in the context, she is the quintessence of beauty. Now it's very often hard for these men uh, to, to get the context and get the documentation. All that. A lot of times it's just spoken. In this case it was spoken. Um, and, uh, and I think we, uh, and there's the, the, uh, the syllable, they're, they're getting very good at that, just spotting how many syllables which one's stressed. And it's a good thing actually uh, because of what I hope to do. Quintessence, and I think we settled on the definition of perfect example or, or something like that. I, I, I just can't remember. Um, I, I wasn't able to write that much either because uh, there were almost no pens. I had my own, but we were sharing them, uh, and, and time is so short. And then the other one, and that was spoken. The other one was, he, the man had no idea how to say it, so he just spelled it. Uh, and I said, I think maybe that's airy. Uh, uh, he thought maybe eerie. He, he didn't know. And when we looked it up, it, it, it said it's a variant of airy. Airy, and that was spelled a couple different ways. Pretty obscure word, and I guessed, I guessed that I thought it maybe was an eagle's nest, but that was just this wild guess of mine. Turns out I was right. It, it means the definition we settled on was a high point or something like that. A highest uh, high point. Uh, I, I I just don't remember because as I say, I I wasn't writing it down uh, from the area, and it's a noun. And uh, this man had gotten it from Frankenstein. He had, I said to him immediately, where did you get that book? And he said, in the library. He, he found a copy of it all beat up. He said it wasn't in very good shape. But, but he told me, it's blowing me away. <laughs> he said, man said. And toward the end, when the class was kind of over, we were walking away, he said it once again, it's blowing him away. Uh, he, I, I guess he had never read uh, such a good book, uh, I, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I immediately said, that is such an important book. That's the beginning of science fiction. That's the beginning of horror fiction. Uh, and he said, do you know how old she was when she wrote it? And I said, yeah, I th she was 19, I think. And, and we, we talked briefly about that, but I was just amused to, to hear him, his reaction to actually reading some some truly great fiction. Uh, you know, maybe he's written lots of other before. I don't know, but but so often they they don't the classics like that are, are a little harder to get. Uh, that was kind of funny. Well, anyway, we worked with the words. Uh, uh, I don't even know to what extent we put them into sentences because time is always so short. Uh, well, anyway, that's that's the words. That's the backbone. We we did that, and and there were no, as I said already, there there were the, the women didn't come, so there was no words plus that day. Now I had some sort of Christmas presents, and I was able to get some of them, well, to the men, basically all of them there. I had, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these or not, but but there there are two. Uh, we now have a copier that that works. And so uh, I, I made enough of these. We should have done it probably front and back. Let, let me see if I get close enough. If if you can maybe, <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see. But uh, you know, being able to punctuate is a very useful thing. And uh, and uh, I and the time short, I just gave him the whole stuff. The rhyme chart. You know, I'm not I'm not positive if they're going to be able. 
I'm pretty sure they're going to start to write verse, if not poetry, as well. And I didn't really have time to teach it yet, but I thought, well, I'll show them the stuff anyway. Uh, the first, uh, the uh, origin of, of the English language, you know, that, that would take some explaining. I, well, no, I did explain that. Uh, the rest, I said, hey, you're just going to have to look at it and figure it out. So that was a success. I, I had taken a, a, another copy of this story poems in to show them. I, I don't know if you would remember, but I, uh, I bought as many copies as I could, really seven, I think it was, when I realized it was out of print and, and you really couldn't get it anymore. And, and, and the women, it, it, in the women's class, it, it was just like candy. They loved it. Well, much to my surprise, the men's reaction was a lot the same. You know, I had said to them, you know, if you've, if you've got a wonderful story and you put it into verse poetry, then you've really got something. And they're believing me, and they're believing what I say, and uh, boy, they wanted this. And I was able to leave them a copy. Uh, there's one library for men, one library for women, and, and uh, an issue came up about, all right, which group of men was going to be able to get it first, because uh, of the one group of men, it's, it's higher. You know, it was almost like, hey, who, who gets that first, because they were afraid it would, it would disappear. They really wanted that, which was really cool. Uh, and this was kind of just a, a, a big surprise. You might have said it was serendipity. I, the woman that, that uh, is there with me every day, the uh, official, you might say, it uh, turns out she uh, had loved to diagram sentences younger. Mo most people did uh, that, that ever studied it, really. And, you know, the men, I didn't know that was going to happen, but they were almost instantly fascinated with this. And... Uh, so we'll have to see where that goes. I think it certainly can become a competitive sport um, among uh, among those men. I think so. So they were successes. Now to the women, and that's out of print, incidentally. Uh, the the author, it was Kenneth Publishing. William Leahy, L E A H. Maybe it'll uh, maybe it'll come back in at, to print at some time. I don't know. Uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Publishing. Well, okay. I wonder if it's even copyrighted. It, it might not even. St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, it's copyrighted in 1965. It's a 1987 edition I have of it. Um, a wonderful book. As a matter of fact, this whole series is wonderful. I know why I had it there. I had it because I, w I gave a copy to the... Uh, the woman that's always there with me, knowing that she, I, I had earlier found out that she'd love to do that. Now, um, a, a failure though, well, going over to the women, I was, they didn't come, but nonetheless, through the woman that's there with me all the time, I, I was able to send to them a copy of what exists of the Song of Marion's Daughter, and also, it's a fragment, it's not finished, and I you might remember that I'm, I'm hoping that I can get them to go on and then work on finishing it. And a set of notes about where is that story going to go. I was pretty excited about getting that to them. Uh, and uh, Now I'm not going to see them for, uh, it, it's this time it's two weeks because Christmas there's a holiday and whatever. Uh, so that was a success. This was not. Uh, I had brought this, I bought this actually new. Uh, and it was new, it says Dare to Repair. It was new, paperback, and uh, it, it relates to the Song of Marion's Daughter, actually. You might recognize that image on the front, again, if you can see this. Um, that, that's Rosie the Riveter. Uh, and uh, the, the problem with this one was it also teaches, among other things, it teaches how to repair and, uh, repair and or replace electrical things and uh, plumbing. And apparently that would be, could be a, a hazard for the women to know how to do that because presumably if you could repair it, you could also uh, destroy it or damage it. Uh, I don't know. But in any case, I, I was not able to leave that behind. All right. Uh, I, I guess that's everything for now. Uh, see you next time. Bye for now.